Hey guys, welcome back to Megan Grace DIY. Today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a satin lined scrub cap using only two pieces and it takes only three steps. If you haven't checked them out already, I've also got tutorials on how to make a fitted scrub cap and a bouffant scrub cap. But thanks to all your great questions and comments, I decided to make an additional tutorial showing you how to put a satin lining in and how to use a toggle to make the elastic adjustable. For this project, you're going to need two squares of fabric, one square that's cotton and one square that's satin, and they need to be approximately 20 by 20 inches. Take your cotton square and go ahead and fold it in half once and then fold it in half again. Take the satin layer and fold it in half once and fold it half again the same way. Using a measuring tape, I'm going to measure our circle from the bottom left-hand corner of our square. You're going to use that bottom left-hand corner as your anchor point, and then you're going to move the tape in an arc marking 9.5 inches as you go. Once you've got all your pins in place, you should be able to see a quarter of a circle forming, like I'm tracing with my finger here. Take your scissors and cut just outside the pins marking that quarter circle. Once your quarter circle is cut out of the cotton, you're going to take it and use it as a pattern on top of your satin layer. I've used a few pins to go ahead and hold my pattern in place, and I'm going to cut around it, ensuring that both my circles come out the same size. Take the satin circle and open it up and lay it out on your table with the satin side facing up. Then take your cotton circle, also open it up, and lay it on top of the satin circle so the right sides of the fabric should be kissing each other. Starting with the top, I'm going to go ahead and put pins all the way around the perimeter of the circle. I like to put my pins in a 90 degree angle to the seam I'm going to sew, but I know some people prefer their pins to be parallel to the seam they're going to sew. Use whatever method works best for you. Once we've got all our pins in place, we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew around the entire perimeter of the circle, but we're gonna leave about a two inch gap so we're able to flip the circle inside out. I'm sewing the perimeter with my stitch length at about three and my seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch, but just make sure since there's two layers that you're catching both layers in your stitching so you won't have any holes. I've stitched around the entire edge, except for that two inch gap that I'm gonna to use to flip the project inside out. I flipped my project right side out like a pillow and you're gonna make sure that you try to push all the edges as far out to the ends as possible. Using my iron, I'm gonna press the two circles down flat. Now I know it can be tough to make sure that the seam is all the way to the edge because we didn't press this from the inside. So what I do is I kind of roll the seam between my fingers until I know the thread is all the way to the edge. I want you to make sure that your pressing of the circle is as crisp and even as possible. When it comes to the hole that you've left open, I want you to go ahead and bend those towards the inside and press them flat because we're going to end up sewing it closed. Once our pressing is complete, we're going to go back to the machine and add a top stitch all the way around the circle about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the circle. Once you've gone around the entire circle, you're actually gonna go ahead and stitch closed the hole we used to flip the project inside out, but you're gonna still leave about a half inch hole to put our elastic in. Now we're gonna make our casing. If you don't know what a casing is, it's a channel that allows you to put either a drawstring or an elastic through it to scooch in a larger piece of fabric to a smaller part of the body. In this situation, we're creating a casing to put some elastic or cord to scooch the cap into our head while still leaving some volume for our hair. Since the elastic I'm going to use is a quarter inch wide, I made my casing about 3 eighths of an inch wide. But this can be adjusted depending on how wide your elastic is. To make sure I'm sewing the casing at an even distance, I line up the very edge of the cap and have it hang out about an eighth of an inch from underneath the presser foot or you can line it up with one of the measurement lines on your throat plate. And for this seam, we're gonna sew all the way around and leave no hole, you're gonna sew the circle complete. On to inserting our elastic. 
Since I'm going to show you how to make the elastic adjustable in this video, I actually cut my elastic at 26 inches, which will give me some extra to hang out the back. But if you're going to close the elastic at the end, making the cap not adjustable, I suggest anywhere between 16 to 18 inches to fit an average size head. As you can see here, I'm using the safety pin to push my elastic through the casing, and I'm going to work my way around the entire circle. I know some people also use a crochet hook to put elastic in, but I'm not 100% sure if it would work for this situation. I'm going to push the gathers back towards the end of the elastic, but I want to make sure I'm leaving a couple inches of the elastic free at the end so my elastic doesn't disappear into the casing. Just to be safe, I'm going to pin that excess elastic to the cap. I've got my elastic completely worked through with a couple extra inches at the end. I'm going to use something called a cord stop. You can find these very easily on Amazon or at any craft store. All you need to do to put the cord stop in place is squish down the button and take the two ends of the elastic and push it through. This will hold your elastic securely in place and if someone is wearing the cap that needs to expand or take in the elastic, they just hold down the button and adjust as needed. And my last step before my cap is ready to wear is to just make sure that my gathers are even around the circle. We don't want more bunching in one spot than another. Once you've done that, that's really all there is to it. And you've got a beautiful satin lined scrub cap. I really love the touch of elegance that the satin brings to this scrub cap. You could wear it reversed and it's also a great cap to wear if you choose to protect your hair at night. When you're putting the cap on, I prefer to put the toggle towards the back and you can adjust it on your head where you feel like it's the most comfortable. And then you can easily just reach towards the back, push that button in and adjust your elastic as necessary. This scrub cap is easy, simple to make, comfortable, and it stays in place very easily. And as some people asked in the comments, if you need to size the scrub cap up, it's very easy. You just add an inch or two around the circle. And that's it for today's lesson. Thank you so much for stopping by Megan Grace DIY. If you have any questions or comments about this project, please feel free to put them in the comments below or shoot me an email or a message on Instagram. And if you really are a fan of my videos and you want to help my channel grow, one of the best ways you can do that is to hit the subscribe button and to share this video on your social media. So thank you one more time. And as always, happy sewing.